Now that you've created a basic assembly of two components, we're going to show you how to take these components, explode them, create an exploded assembly with a parts list on a drawing sheet, and how to create detailed drawings of each of these two components within one drawing sheet packet. So we're going to begin by making sure that the object has been saved. And so we want to save our assembly. And so our block assembly has now been saved. We can create additional components as necessary for the puzzle cube or for any assembly. Once we're finished with creating the assembly, we're then going to move to the next step, which is creating what is known as a presentation file. The presentation file has us explode the assembly. Once the assembly has been exploded and saved, we then create the drawing associated with it. So our next step is presentation. Our final step will actually be creating the drawings. So now we open up a new file called presentation. Don't worry, it opens up right over the old block assembly. Um, and what we need to do is create our view. That's the first step. We create the view by selecting what the assembly is that we want to work with. And in this case, the block assembly is what we're going to do. Now, when we deal with presentations, we explode the parts away from each other. And typically, you can do an automatic explosion by a set distance on how it was constrained, or you can manually move it. I recommend manual explosion. I know it takes a little bit longer. However, you have much more control. So we're now in the presentation. And with the presentation, we have tweak, precise view rotation, and animate. So we're going to show you how to actually create an animation that you can send to your friends after you create the presentation file. For us to move components, it's called tweaking. So we're going to tweak our components. And when we tweak a component, we have to select the direction, what the component is. And I typically don't worry too much about the trail origin position. Um, when you get to larger assemblies, you want to specifically locate where the trail or that line that shows how parts come together. You know, think about when you get an assembly diagram for wood furniture or for a bicycle. You get that exploded assembly and, you sh and it shows you the little lines of where parts fit together. That's called the trail. We also can edit an existing trail that we've created. When we do transformations, transformations are the directions and the distances that we apply. For example, if I choose an X, Y, or Z and type a value in, it's going to move in that direction. If I pick rotation and type a value, it's going to rotate at so many degrees associated with it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is select the components. I know it's not the first one on the list. But I always found that selecting the components first makes it easier than selecting the direction first. A couple of tips on selecting components. Select the components out on the outer edge. Do not try to pick them in the middle because what will happen is that you will select both components at one time. Or select more than one component and when you try to move it it's like, oh no, I didn't want to do that. You can use the shift key if you hold the shift key down you can deselect the selection however you want to be aware that it's easier to get it right the first time by selecting an outer edge where there's no other objects near now if you've got a component that has got objects all around it then my suggestion is to zoom in and rotate it so you can get an outside edge that you can pick you just need one little spot to select I'm going to select the blue object as the object that I would like to tweak. You can see that, that it's now highlighted. The direction is putting a set of axes on the object, an X, Y, or Z position. And depending upon where I pick, will determine what direction Z is going to move. And so if I pick a top surface, you can see how X and Y are positioned. X and Y are positioned the same here, but if I choose the side, X and Y are positioned 
differently and Z is pointed out from the object surface. I'm going to pick the top surface here with X and Y positioned appropriately. If I pick the outer edge, notice that X and Z and Y rotate around. Not good. You want to be consistent or know which way X, Y, and Z are going to flow. All right, so the blue arrow is Z, and that's why I rotated it so you can see the blue arrow because when I do it this way, it kind of sinks right in with it. So when I move this block, I'm going to move it in the X direction away and then the Z direction up because that's how it would be assembled. When you put these two blocks together, you would actually move them together in that location. I could also move it in the Y direction first, move it away, and then up. That would work too. But again, since they're interlocking, I'm going to move it in an X or a Y position first, and then a Z. Now the positive X and the positive Y are the direction of the arrows. So if I choose X, it's going to turn that arrowhead blue, but if positive X moves towards the red part, then I'm going to have to put a negative number to move it away from the, the red part. So at this point, I'm going to type in a negative 2.0 inches. Remember, each block is 3 quarters of an inch. I want to make sure that this block clears the red piece, so I'm going to make it 2.0 inches. Choose the green Apply button, and you'll see that the block will move 2 inches away. My next move will be in the Z direction. So now that I've selected Z, I can type in another value, and I'll type in a negative 3.5 inches. I'm going to rotate my view so you can see how that's going to move straight up now. Uh-oh, went down 3.5. Why? Because positive Z was up, negative Z was down. So what do I do now? Well, I can undo it. If I choose the undo, I can undo it. I can also edit the existing trail by selecting this trail and saying alright I can go negative 3.5 to change it in the direction. So again it showed me as a positive, I put it as a negative, it reversed its directional view. Okay, Slow motion instant replay. So there it is. I can choose Tweak Components, Edit an Existing Trail, and we don't want it as negative 3.5, excuse me, showing you it is positive 3.5 here. I'm going to put a negative in front of that and watch what happens. Okay, it flips it. So now it's in the direction that I originally wanted it. And I can close the tweak. So I've got the two components. They've got two tweaks associated with it. It moves it away and up, and it looks good. I'll hit the Save button, because I always like to save, and we're going to go ahead and save this as Block Assembly IPN. And do we need to save the assembly model? No. Do we need to save any of the IPT files? No. But it is our initial save on the block, and so we're all set. All right. Let's go ahead and animate it. Let's, let's choose the Animate button. And if you're familiar with the VCR, it works exactly the same way. Intervals. If I hit the Play Forward right now, it's going to move this down and lock it in. The problem is, is that 25 is really slow. Change your interval to 10. And I'll choose Apply, and then hit the Play button. Okay. Now if I just to show you what the difference is, I'm going to reset, put it at 25 again, hit apply, watch how slow it moves. There's the difference. Okay. So 10 is significantly faster than 25. Choose reset and we'll go 10. And apply. Now I can also control, I use the double arrow here at the end 
I can also control what sequence this moves in. So if I wanted to move this down sequence number one below sequence number two and apply it, watch what happens now. It's going to move in and then down. Be careful with that so that way the object does not hit the other object. When you assemble objects, you want them to assemble like they would in real life. That's the idea of creating this video and the exploded assembly is to show customers and users how objects assemble. The red record button allows you to record it, save it as an AVI, and then you can send it off to your friends or post it up on YouTube, whatever you'd like. Um, that's pretty easy to do. I'm not even going to cover how to do that. You hit the record button, you want to choose reset, hit the record button and go. And basically it records it, allows you to save it, and then you can post it wherever you need to post it or attach it to an email. Now that I've got the tweaks done, and I like what, I, what the tweaks are, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the animation, save my work, and then move on to the last step. The last step is creating the drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Drawing. Again, from the drop down, we're going to create a brand new drawing. So I've started with the assembly, created the presentation, and tweaked the objects away, all the objects. And now I'm going to create the drawing. 